Why hello there! My name is Ricky, and today I'm going to be upgrading my custom box insert for Legendary, a Marvel deck building game. Come along with me, will you? As you can see, I've already created a custom insert for this game. It currently holds all 1,850 cards from every expansion made to date, including the original game, Fantastic Four, Paint the Town Red, Guardians of the Galaxy, Dark City, Secret Wars Volume 1, and Secret Wars Volume 2. But as you may know, just around the corner, Upper Deck will be releasing the Captain America 75th Anniversary Small Box Expansion. And as it stands, this box is pretty much filled to capacity. There's a little room here, but since I have a very specific organization set up, I'm just going to need a better solution. So, what I'm going to do is come up with a way to utilize all three of these bottom rows. Now, you may be wondering why I did it this way in the first place. Well, I originally based the row width on the dividers that came with the original game, and as you can see, they all slide into each row very nicely. It also gives me a nice little cubby here where I can keep the shards that came with Guardians of the Galaxy, along with a couple counters and the blue gem I used for Baby Hope in the Capture Baby Hope scheme. But where the original dividers do not fit nicely is in this center row. As you can see, when I place them in, there's a bit of bowing that happens. Now to be fair, if I take some cards and my custom dividers, which I've made the same size as the originals, they do technically fit, but they just don't slide back and forth as nicely as they do in the other rows. <laughs> and look, you try and move them and they already want to get all crooked on you. Like, really, who would ever choose to live this way? So, how I plan to remedy this is by simply trimming down my custom dividers. As you can see, the original dividers are about 3 16ths of an inch wider than the cards, but if I cut the difference down to just 1 16th and then adjust my rows accordingly, you'll see I'll end up with a much more streamlined box organizer where all the cards and dividers slide nicely back and forth and where I'll have plenty of room for a new expansion. So, first of all, what I'll be needing for this upgrade is some cardboard. This is just a standard cardboard shipping box you'll find at any office supply store or post office. You'll also need a ruler, a pencil, a straight edge, I'm just using this metal ruler, a box cutter, and maybe some scissors. Now, before I take this insert apart, I want to point out that some of these cardboard pieces have little ledges, and I'll be doing the same thing with the new insert as well. The reason for this is simply so the board fits snugly in the box and doesn't move around. So yeah, let's get started. First I'm going to empty out the original box. This here is just one of the Secret Wars boxes I still have lying around. Now, as you can see, all that was keeping this part up were these little cardboard wall separators, but really, that's all it needs. Since I built this insert, I think last October, this box has been lugged to friends' houses on game nights, out to the suburbs during the holidays, and it's held up perfectly, so I expect this new insert to perform just as well, if not better. So the first box is pretty full, so here's the other Secret Wars box. And looking at them here side by side, one might wonder, why not just use the two boxes? But as you can see, the board does not fit in either box. And yeah, I guess you could run around carrying the board separately, but again, who would ever choose to live that way? But I have considered taking both these boxes and making one mega box out of them. I'm not exactly sure how I'd accomplish that without completely mangling the two, but ideally I'd want to keep the boxes with the official artwork as the outer shell while still leaving space inside for the board. And as you can see, it wouldn't actually be that much bigger than the original box. So yeah, if that's something you guys would like to see me try, let me know. I think it'd be fun. Okay, I'm going to start by measuring the box, and as you can see, it is exactly 11 inches wide. You can see this section here fits perfectly inside, and it too is exactly 11 inches. Now I'm going to show you really quickly why using the original card dividers or homemade dividers cut to the same size just won't work. Once again, the original dividers are 3 and 5 eighths inches wide, so multiply that by 3 and you have 10 and 7 eighths. And when you subtract that from 11, all you're left with is an eighth of an inch. Now if you look at the cardboard I'm using for the walls, you can see it's a pretty standard thickness of about an eighth of an inch. So if I need two walls in order to make three rows, I'm going to end up being short about, you guessed it, an eighth of an inch. And that's why this travesty occurs. So to fix that, I'll be making all my dividers three and a half inches wide. 
multiply by three, we're at 10 and a half inches. And since all the walls are gonna be an eighth of an inch thick, if I use four of them, we make up that last half inch and bam, we're at 11 inches. Plus the outside walls will make for exterior construction. So we're gonna start by cutting out our longest wall. As I showed you before, this one has a little ledge to help keep the game board in place. So the measurements of this are, again, 11 inches wide, and the main height is three inches tall, which is also the height of our dividers. And the part with the ledge I have at three and uh, about three eighths, which would of course make the little ledge about three eighths of an inch tall. Now, this height doesn't have to be perfect, as you just saw, mine wasn't. Just as long as it's tall enough to catch the edge of the board. But the width of the ledge does need to be on point in order to make sure everything fits properly in the box. And the dimension for that is exactly two inches. Look at that. So here's what our long wall will look like in the end. So the box I got for this is just a standard 14 by 14 by 14 inch shipping box that I'm sure you can get from any office supply store or post office. The exact size of the box doesn't matter as long as it's an eighth of an inch thick and at least 12 inches wide by, I'd say eight inches tall just to make sure you can get all your pieces out of one box. But if you wanna have some breathing room, you might wanna go for a bigger box or at least make sure you have a backup. Now, since I am using a bigger box, I'm gonna cut it down into more manageable sections. Always remember to put another scrap piece of cardboard under what you're cutting to make sure you don't damage your table. So now I'm going to measure and cut out my long wall. I love using this kind of ruler for projects like this just because it really helps you make sure you have your straight lines and perfect angles. And now you're going to take your straight edge and cut out the larger piece and then this little bit so you have your ledge and viola. You got your long wall, really your main piece and as you can see it fits very nicely into the box. And now that we have our main long row, we're going to want to measure out our three shorter rows. Now we all know by now that the original box is 11 inches wide, but it's also 11 inches tall. So if our rows are going to be three and a half inches wide, and the wall is an eighth of an inch thick, that'll make our vertical rows seven and three eighths inches long. Which means we're going to need four wall pieces that are seven and three eighths inches wide by three inches tall. And as you can see here, I'm measuring these out two at a time, but you can do whatever is easier for you and whatever box size you have, just as long as you end up with four identical pieces. So now we have all our wall pieces cut out, and as you can see, right now it falls apart real quick. And that's why we need our cardboard separators. I have a couple right here that I've already cut down to three and a half inches wide, just to show how this is all gonna go together. And as you can see, even just adding these two wall separators, the insert pretty much stands on its own. But now we're gonna need six more separators to go on the top and bottom of our three lower rows, which means altogether we're gonna need seven separators measuring three and a half inches wide by three inches tall, and an eighth separator with a little ledge similar to the one on the long wall. That way the board fits in nice and snug once everything is put together. Now, since the folded up board isn't perfectly square, we're gonna wanna make this ledge only one and a quarter inches wide. And again, the ledge itself is gonna be about three eighths of an inch tall, making these the final dimensions for the ledge separator. Actually, when I went to measure out this piece, I ran into a fold in the box. So I actually only made the ledge side about a quarter inch taller than the rest of the piece, which will work fine. You really just wanna make sure your ledge is a bit taller than the other separators. Now when I cut this out the first time, I actually measured the width of the ledge wrong. So here I am adjusting and all I have to do is cut out this little chunk. Not really sure why I'm including this here except to maybe show that we're all human and we all make mistakes. So maybe just remember to have a big enough box in case you have to recut a piece or two. So yeah, this is actually the same box I cut the original insert out of. And you can see I've been able to cut this whole second one out of it. But since I'm getting down to the dregs, I want to find the squarest corners I can to cut out the seven remaining pieces. And these are going to be super easy. Just measure and cut out as many at a time as you want until you have seven identical pieces. Okay, so now we're ready to put this thing together. First you take the long wall with the ledge, slide that in. Then you're going to want to take your wall separator with the ledge and put it here. Then put one of your regular separators there. Make sure both ledges are on outside end so the board has a nice place to sit. Now, on either side, we put two shorter walls, and already the tension is holding up the main wall. Then we put another separator here, a short wall, another separator, another wall, and one more separator here, and then we just slide the last three separators, and... You know what? 
I just happen to have an extra one of these little separators with the ledge. So for now, I'm just going to put it right here in the middle. That way when I put my board away, it's not going to slide around at all. So if you want to cut out an extra one for yourself, why not? And now for the fun part. Like I said earlier, I originally cut my custom dividers down to the same size as the ones that came with the original game, making them all 3 and 5 8 inches wide, while the cards themselves are only 3 and 7 16 So now I've got to take all my dividers and cut them down to 3 and a half inches wide. Now, you may have noticed that this will only leave me about a 16th of an inch buffer between the cars and the walls of this insert. That may not seem like a lot of room, but when I'm done, you'll see that's more than enough room for the cards to fit nicely in the box. Okay, I'm not sure if I made this super clear, but the card dividers are going to be the same size as the cardboard wall separators. I'm actually measuring the width here to just inside of the 3.5 inch mark, and that's just to make sure the cards and dividers all slide nicely back and forth. Now, this may seem like a lot of work, and you know what, it probably is for most people. But if you're the sort of person who's going to take the time to make your own custom box inserts, and you actually own enough expansions to necessitate doing so, you're going to want to make your own dividers. I mean, the original game only came with 60, and that may last you a couple of the small box expansions, but just the original game and Dark City alone have a combined 60 heroes, villains, henchmen, and masterminds. So even if that's the only expansion you have, you won't have any dividers left to keep your schemes from your wounds, from your Maria Hills, and and so forth. And remember, if you're watching this before you start your own customization, you're at an advantage because you won't have to go through all this separating and trimming and putting them back and whatever I'm doing because you'll have made the cards the right size in the first place. So yeah, there you have it, all 1850 cards from all the expansions I showed you earlier. And, as you can see, since the cardboard separators aren't stationary walls, they actually slide back and forth with the cards, making it super easy to flip through your inventory and pick out what you need. Now over here I don't actually have my Heroes from Secret Wars Volume 2 labeled yet, but if you like this video and are curious how I make my dividers, I mean it's super easy, but you know, maybe I can throw a video about that together too. But yeah, when you're ready to pack your box up, everything slides right back into place, along with whatever you use to hold your shards and whatnot. And of course, your original rulebook, Fantastic Four, Paint the Town Red, Guardians of the Galaxy, Dark City, Secret Wars Volume 1, and Secret Wars Volume 2. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, why not give it a like and let me know what you thought in the comments. And if you're interested in watching me attempt to make the two Secret Wars boxes into one larger box, let me know and I'll give that a try. Same as if you're curious about how I label my dividers, or even just how I organize my box in general. So yeah, thanks for watching!